a topic just you can cover into one lecture and this has the basic involved only if you know the basics this the basic is good morning all how are you so myself priyanka godara maths optional faculty in this lecture we are going to start with one of the topic of statics statics in is in our syllabus now it is in paper 1 unit number 6 statics and dynamics are considered somewhere little bit unfamiliar topic because sometimes what happens the students who don't have science background then they feel difficulty in this topic whenever they read go through this this topic because it has kind of thoda sa physics wala touch hai na ki there would be some elements of physics so i would try to simplify this topic the topic today we are going to discuss is common catenary common catenary this is the topic that is mentioned in the syllabus directly and it is a very small topic it is not that very big that we cannot cover it into one lecture this is a topic just you can cover into one lecture and this has the basic involved only if you know the basics this the basic is you should know the intrinsic equation of the catenary then you should know cartesian equation of the catenary and then you should know five to six relations are there between different different terms and if you know those terms and those relations then after that this topic is done you can deal with any question of the common catenary there would be simpler questions so in this lecture we will try to cover these concepts only okay so that in one lecture only your one topic would be finished so first we will start what is a catenary what is the definition of a catenary so definition of a catenary is that ki whenever you have one string or elastic string spring or any chain kind of thing that is been tied in a vertical plane by two some by two pegs or somewhere else by two holes or whatever it is if it is been tied by two things and the chain is hanging in the vertical plane then it would work as a catenary then what is with the common meaning what is the meaning of common in the common catenary the common catenary is specific type of the catenary when the weight per unit your string of your chain of your elastic string or spring it is uniform throughout the whatever material you are using whatever thing you are using it may be a string it may be a spring or it may be a chain so if the weight throughout your material is uniform or it is unit per unit per unit weight is same throughout the material then we will say the catenary used is common catenary okay so let's try to discuss some of the basics of common catenary if you have let me draw this one again so if you do have a catenary that is tied by two pegs suppose these are two pegs to which a catenary is being tied and this chain is being tied here so we will assume this is a common catenary and let what will you assume let w be weight and we can safely assume that this is a string okay so let w be per unit weight of the string per unit weight of the string this is our assumption after that i will define some of the terms and the terms will start from here suppose these are two pegs say a and b then there would be one line that is midpoint in between somewhere and suppose this is another line then this is the lowest point of the catenary right say this is c capital c is this one and it is known as vertex of the catenary okay and suppose there would be some arbitrary point say p arbitrary point p is denoted by xy that is xy are coordinates of this arbitrary point on our common catenary if i do say you know that on any arbitrary point of a elastic string if it is hanging freely under the force of gravity 
then there would be tension and tension in the string would be along the perpendicular to this point. So this would be the perpendicular somewhere. Say this is the tension and tension would be working in this direction because the slope would be positive in upward direction. So this is the point that is the tension that is working along the tangent in the string and we will assume that this tangent is making angle psi. This is the angle psi with this line that is horizontal line and after some time we will say something say this is x and say this is y extend this into upward direction and say that is y axis this is x axis okay and if this is the angle psi then do you know what these are this is the point x y then we have some terms this is known as c that is the distance c and it is fixed it is called as parameter of the catenary this distance is parameter okay again what we will assume see we i have said that let w be the weight of the string per unit weight of the string can i assume there some arc length suppose this arc let me use the another pen this is the arc length we are dealing with so arc, this arc length that I have used from green color, it would be S. That is arc PC, arc PC, arc PC. That is arc length of PC is S. And if it is S, then it, this arc length must, must be having some of the weight. And weight would always work vertically downward, right? So weight would be applied and this is common catenary that means weight per unit length would be uniform or weight would be uniform throughout the catenary. So I would assume that weight is working from here, somewhere middle in this thing. So it would be working somewhere, somewhere from here now because if you have a weight then it would be working vertically downward and if the thing or string is uniform then the weight would be working, working downward from the center of the string. So this is the midpoint and we have assumed, but what would be the weight? This is the length of the string and one unit length string has W weight. So this total weight would be SW. Okay. Right. And after that, what you do have, let's define some other things. Any, this line, the particular, this line that I am saying, this is X axis. It is known as directrix directrix of the common catenary which is at a distance c from the lowest point of the catenary c is the lowest point that is vertex vertex c directrix directrix ka distance would be equal to small c and this small c is known as parameter of the catenary right then there is another term that is span span this is span and what is span span is the largest length this length AB is span. Widest length or largest length you can say is the span. Then join these two, two lines. And now there would be this some distance. Distance if that point is D. Suppose this is D. Then distance DC or CD would be sag. This is sag. Sag is distance CD. That is distance of the category from the highest point to the lowest point would be your sag. And after that, tell me if there is tension, then this is P and there would be some tension at the lower point. This would be always constant and we denote it by T node. And I have said that this is always constant. So it do have a constant value and that constant value is equal to equal to weight of of the string the string of length c and which c the parameter c so it would be equal to weight of the length went of the string of length c c length ki jitni string hai uska jo weight hoga that would be equal to your lowest tension or the tension at the lowest point so w length ki per unit weight is w per unit length weight is w so c length mein kitna ho jayega C W. So T note would always be equal to C W. So this was the basic of your 
common category after that we will try and then this y axis y axis it is known as axis of the category let me write here only this is axis okay it is sag this is span right so everything is mentioned and these are the terms which we use in common category after that we will try to find out its intrinsic equation we will require this diagram again and again intrinsic equation intrinsic equation of common category let me draw again so that we don't need to go back and back again and again this is common category this would be axis it is directrix let's assume this is some arbitrary point x y then there would be tension along the tangent and this is the angle sin suppose this is similar there would be t here t is the tension this is the arc length s and weight would be working vertically downward and this weight would be s w where w is the per unit length of the string okay and then there would be tension at the lowest point and this is denoted as t naught now what will you do to find out the intrinsic equation intrinsic equation is the equation which involve s and your tangent ke sath angle jo hoga with x axis so angle psi and s should be there so how could you find out that psi would be we will find out psi value but for that we have only things in the statics that is if you don't know anything then try to resolve the forces so how many forces are working there one is tension in the string then mass of the not mass weight of the string is working vertically downward and then there is this t naught that is tension at the lowest point so these are the three forces which are working on the common category and we will try to resolve them once along the x axis another time perpendicular to the x axis right so resolving the three forces three forces which are the three forces t t naught and the weight s w horizontal how would you resolve to resolve you should have the angle so what i will, what will i do i will draw a parallel line to x axis and now this angle is psi so this angle would be again psi and if this would have been this one so this is the angle psi right it is the psi angle which we do know and then you should know all the angles with the all the axes so how would you find out now resolve these values so what we need should know we should know the angles which t t naught and s w are making with x axis and y axis so what are the angle let me use the another pen this is the angle tangent is making angle psi so t is making psi angle with x axis and what is the angle made by s w so this would be this angle right and what is the angle made by t naught this would be this one so this is psi angle it is 270 degree because this is in the third quadrant this was the vertical this was horizontal it is vertical line so the angle between here is 270 and this angle is 180 now resolve this thing so by resolving the forces along the x axis or horizontally what will you get t cos of the angle between t and x axis that is psi then let me write here only plus plus angle with t naught is 180 degree so it would be t naught cos of 180 degree and then angle with sw is sw cos of 270 this is equal to 0 so t cos psi would be as it is what is cos 80 this is minus 1 so it would be minus of t naught and cos of 270 is equal to 0 so this would be 0 and m only thing we are left with is equal to 0 Y equal to zero because there would be an equilibrium, and in equilibrium, some of the all the resolved forces horizontally as well as vertically would be equal to zero. 
and hence from here we will get p naught is equal to p cos psi. Then we will resolve the forces vertically. And basics of statics says that if you have written all the angles in proper format, then while resolving anything vertically, you just need to change cos into sine. So the first this equation would imply you T sine psi plus T naught sine 180 plus SW sine 270 should be equal to 0. And from here, what will we get? T sine psi and this sine 180 is equal to 0 and this would be minus sine 270 is minus 1. So this would be minus SW and on the right hand side, it would be plus SW. So these are the two equations. This is first one. This is second one. Write the second into the format of first only. So that would be SW is equal to T sine psi. Now we need equation into psi and S. So what will you do? You need to remove this T, T naught and T then. What will you do? Just divide equation 2 by equation 1. So 2 by 1. This would provide you T sin psi, sin psi divided by T cos psi. And on the last slide, what we had T sin psi was equal to SW and that was equal to T naught. So SW and what is value of T naught? T naught is WC. Pehle hi humne kar liya hai, so this would be tangent psi and it would be SW over W C S A S would be cancelled and therefore S is equal to C tan psi. And this is the required intrinsic equation of common catenary. S is equal to C tan psi. Next one is we will find out Cartesian equation. What is the Cartesian equation? Cartesian equation would be the equation which would involve X and Y. So P is the point where this which is defined as the coordinate coordinate in the coordinate coordinates P is P has the coordinate X and Y. But how would you convert that thing? See, whenever you have tangent psi, now this tan psi represents slope of the curve. And we know in Cartesian slope of the curve is Cartesian slope of the curve dy by dx. So we will replace in equation 3 slope of the curve would be C R V E. So this would be equal to tan psi. Put tan psi is equal to dy by dx in equation 3, and then 3 would imply you s is equal to c tan psi is again. We would have dy by dx. Now we need to change S into dy or x. S should be changed into the form of x and y. But what is S? S is arc length and we know the formula for arc length that ds by dx would be equal to under the root 1 plus dy by ds dx and its square. This is the formula for arc length. How would you find out the arc length? Arc length. So put this value here and we will get kya milega? do its derivative first so that we can substitute the value of ds by dx. That would be c and d square y by dx square and therefore it would be equal to under the root 1 plus dy by dx whole square and on the right hand side you do have c d square y by dx square. Now you need to solve this equation. But what is this? This is second order, second order first degree. And second degree would be because you will square and that side you will be second degree. So how would you solve this? What we, we will do to solve this, put dy by dx is equal to z. We can say put this is equal to z. Then this would reduce into 1 plus z square 
is equal to c dz by dx and now it is first order differential equation so how would you solve this by separating the variable so keep the variable terms of z along with z only 1 plus z square and keep the terms of x with this only so we have we don't have any terms of x as such so dx by 1 would be there so what is the what is the integration of this if i do integration so there would be some what is the integration of this this is formula for sine hyperbolic inverse z <coughs> equal to x plus c or you can say capital a because c c is already there we will not use and what is a a is constant of integration now we need to find out the value of a and how would you find out the value of a for finding out any constant term or any arbitrary variable you should know some of the point on the curve and which is the point we know so the point here this would be c now yes this is the c and the distance here would be y coordinate would be c but it is on y axis so this would be 0 c so we need know the coordinate of capital c and these are 0 c again this is the horizontal part of the curve and there would be hame z bhi chahiye na dekho yahan se tumhe nikalna hai so what do you require you require value of x you require value of z and what is z z is dy by dx so that is kind of slope of the curve but at the horizontal point or at the point where the curve takes a turn their derivative is always equal to 0 so at this point c coordinates of c are coordinates c are 0 comma c and at c dy by dx is equal to 0 this implies z is equal to 0 so put all these values in our equation and we will get c sine hyperbolic inverse 0 because dz z is dy by dx so this would be 0 equal to 0 plus a x is 0 at point c so this turns out to be sine hyperbolic inverse 0 is 0 again so this implies a is equal to 0 and if a is equal to 0 then this equation would give you x is equal to c sine hyperbolic inverse z and what is sine z z would be x is equal to x by c you can write then it would be sine hyperbolic inverse dy by dx and take it on that side so we will get dy by dx is equal to sine hyperbolic of x by c and we need to find out the equation into x and y so again this is differential equation of first order and do differentiate this would be integrate or differentiate this would be sine hyperbolic x by c into dx and after integrating we will get y is equal to what is the integration of sine hyperbolic that would be cos hyperbolic x by c and that too divided by 1 by c plus some constant that is b and it would be y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c plus b again we to calculate b we require specific point and that, that specific point would be again x not x c to so add c we have coordinate 0 comma c capital this is capital c so at capital c we have these coordinates so x is equal to 0 and y is equal to c put this value here c is equal to c cos hyperbolic 0 by c plus b and c is equal to c cos hyperbolic 0 is 1 plus b and therefore c c would be cancelled and this is b is equal to 0 so our required equation would be from here and it turns out to be y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c so these are two equation one is the intrinsic equation another one is the cartesian equation and now we need to find out some of the relation how many relations we need to find out we need to find out five relations 
but before that let me write intrinsic equation and cartesian equation of common category intrinsic equation was s is equal to c tan psi and then you have cartesian equation we have derived just now and what was it y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c so these are two equation and using these two equation we will find out our relations how many relation and which all relations we require let me write first you should know relation between psi and x or s ke saath kar le pehle s and x relation between you require relation between one is s and x then second is s and y third one you require relation between psi and y fourth is psi and x and fifth one is you require relation between t and y okay so we will find out all these relations and these relations can be find out by using some of these equations only but how would you find out s and x relation between s and x there we do have s here we do have x so what what one thing that we can have common is if i do differentiate this this would be dy by dx and this dy would d, dx can be used from tangent side because dy by dx is equal to tan side if you have any confusion then write it somewhere dy by dx is equal to tan side these are the things that we know so what i will i do to find out to find out relation between out relation between s and x say this is first equation this is equation 2 so what will we do we will differentiate equation 2 with respect to x differentiating equation 2 with respect to x and it would be dy by dx is equal to c cos hyperbolic x would be sin hyperbolic x by c and after integration it would be 1 by c there so it turns out to be c c c would be cancelled and this is dy by dx is equal to sin hyperbolic x by c but what is dy by dx dy by dx is tan psi so tan psi is equal to using 3 say this is third one so tan psi is equal to sin hyperbolic x by c right somewhere using 3 Okay, but what is tangent psi? Tangent psi is s by c because you require relation between s and x. So some somehow you need to introduce s now. So that would be s by c is equal to sine hyperbolic x by c. And in bracket write using one. Now this would be s is equal to. therefore this implies s is equal to c sin hyperbolic x by c and that is the required relation okay s is equal to c sin hyperbolic x by c next relation so this is done next relation we need to find out between s and y relation between s and y how would you find out the relation between s and y so where is s s is this one and y is equal to this we can do one thing what will you do say this is fourth equation so squaring and subtracting equation 2 from 4 you can write this way do square of second minus 4 square these are equation number not the real numbers so that would be y square Minus s square, and on the right hand side we do have. There it was c cos hyperbolic x by c, and it is c sine hyperbolic x by c. So c square would be outside, and inside you do left. You are left with cos square cos hyperbolic square x by c minus 
sin hyperbolic square x by c and what is this this is the identity in cos hyperbolic x minus sin hyperbolic x would be equal to 1 so therefore we got y square minus s square is equal to c square or you can say y square is equal to c square plus s square so this is the required equation till now now we have four equations say this is the fifth one next we will find out relation between what this is done psi and third one is psi and y psi and y so why we have already from equation fourth we have let me write the heading relation between psi and y so what you all do have is y square is equal to c square plus s square y square you need s square you can replace by using some of the formula where s has psi involved what is the formula where s has something to do with psi in the intrinsic equation only s is equal to c tan square tan psi no square so you can write this y square is equal to c square s is c tan and psi so it would be c square tan square psi from where using equation 1 take c square outside and you will get c square plus c square into 1 plus tan square psi and what is this secant square psi so it would be c square secant square psi so y square is equal to this this implies y is equal to c secant psi and that is it. so this was the relation that we required next is we need to find out say this is sixth one if somewhere we will re need this we will use by referring the equation so next is we need to find out relation between psi and x so to find out relation between psi and x how would you find out that so what we all have is one is s is equal to c tan psi y is equal to c cos hyperbolic x by c and then we do have s is equal to c sin hyperbolic x by c and right now we have derived y is equal to c secant psi so using all this we need to find out the relation between x and psi so from where we will start we need to introduce both s either you should start with x and psi somewhere where you do have x and then introduce psi or you can start something with where you do have psi but you can introduce x so s is here and can i do something s is equal to c tangent psi how would you introduce x here if i do derivative of that then is there any possibility that you can find out yes write it as this way see since s is equal to c tangent psi is the intrinsic equation do derivative of this differentiate with respect to x you will get ds by dx is equal to c this would be secant square psi into d psi by dx now d psi by dx and that is not dx why are you writing dx nahi dx hi hoga ds nahi psi nahi karte bhai psi ke respect mein kar lo fir we will introduce x so that you don't have any thing there because d psi by dx we don't know so d psi by ds by d psi is c tan secant square psi now introduce x so what can we do in multiply and divide by dx this is d psi and it would be c secant square psi now you need to find out the values of d psi ya to you can find out ds by d अच्छा साय और किस में चाहिए हमें रिलेशन साय और एक्स में चाहिए तो यू नीड टू एलिमिनेट एस बट हाउ वुड यू एलिमिनेट एस एस और एक्स में ऐसा कुछ मिलना चाहिए ना सो दैट यू कैन एलिमिनेट सो वेर इज दिंग वेर वी हैव समथिंग टू डू विद एक्स एंड एस वेर इज एक्स 
that is dy by dx if i write from there dy by dx that would be send and sign ठीक है तो what you can do you need to find out ds by dx to find this one what we will do ds by dy into dy by dx कर दो and this is what dy by what is dy by dx we have written it. this is nothing but tan psi because you need to eliminate it into the form of psi only so this is tangent psi and then ds by dy but from where you will find out ds by dy using equation 5 using 5 what will you do differentiate that you will get 2y dy is equal to 2s ds and what we require ds by dy so we will find out that only ds by dy is y by s write it here so this would be tan psi into y by s but still we need to eliminate y and s how would you eliminate so y and s should be in the terms of psi so that you are left with only psi so what is the value of y into psi let me write this on the next page so dx by d ds by dx is turning out to be tan psi into y by s and you just we just want, want this value in the form of psi only so this is tangent psi and why is c secant psi we have derived yet abhi abhi thodi der pehle kahan pe derive kiya tha where we find out the relation between y and psi so using equation 6 using 6 and which one s is equal to c tan psi ye to pehli equation hai intrinsic equation this would be cancelled c would be cancelled and it is equal to secant psi this is ds by dx and what we require here kaha tha yahan pe we need to we need to find out the value of ds by dx so that would be reverse so what which was the question? equation number 6 say this is 7 from 7th and 8th so 7th and and 8th implies this would be 1 by secant psi into what was that that was dx by d psi and on the right hand side what we do have c secant square psi right यही बनता है अपोजिट करना था क्या डी एक्स बाई डी साई इज इक्वल टू सी सी कैंड स्क्र साई नहीं ये कोस साई बन गया था तुम्हारा सी कैंड साई सॉरी दिस वॉज सी कैंड साई सी कैंड साई था ये और दिस वुड बी इफ यू वी विल टेक इट ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड सो इट वुड बी डी एक्स बाई डी साई इज इक्वल टू सी सी कैंड साई स्क्र साई इन टू कोस साई and that would be c secant psi only dx by d psi and now you need to find out the value of this how would you find out so we need to do just integration and do integrate so it would be by variable separable we can solve this so dx is equal to c secant psi and d psi integration what is the integration of secant psi log of x log of secant psi plus tangent psi c is outside log of secant psi plus tan psi and that is the thing that we needed to find out relation between x and psi so last one we needed to find out was relation between so that was on the last slide it is also done and now we need to find out relation between t and y t and y how would you find out this relation see where all we do have t we have t where we derived the equation on the first slide only so t was there this was t somewhere t sin psi on the first slide only this was the thing 
here you have t is equal to t naught t naught cos psi so you can write we do have since t is equal to t naught cos psi ye hai na but what is t naught what is t naught t naught is wc cos psi and you can write t is equal to w t naught tha w psi theek hai so this is t and you can write this is secant psi is equal to wc yahi hoga sorry ulta likha tha humne t naught was equal to t cos psi t naught was equal to t cos psi let me check it once again t naught was equal to t cos psi and therefore this can be written as t is equal to t naught secant psi and what was t naught t naught was wc secant psi but what is c secant psi that is nothing but y from where from equation number kahi to nikala hoga 6 from equation using equation 6 so that is the relation so that was it so this was the basic of common catenary and this is the most this is supposed to be one of the difficult topic but it is not difficult it the only thing was we don't have the familiarity with this and this was the basics of common catenary and believe me this is the it after that you don't need to do anything in the common catenary all the problems based upon this would be solved so that was it in this top topic and if we will have second lecture then we will do some of the question based upon this but derivation has been asked in upsc they may ask you to to derive the relation so you should know how to derive the intrinsic equation how to derive the Cart cartesian equation then how to find out all the five relation which are the four, five relation relation between s and psi s and x y and psi and y and not y y and t and then psi and x so these are the five relation that you need to know and two are the equations that is is intrinsic equation and cartesian equation so that was it thank you see you in the next lecture